Coming up on Black Enterprise Business Report, he went from picking cotton to running Major League Baseball. How did he do it? One swing at a time. Welcome, and thanks for watching Black Enterprise Business Report. I'm Sean Gables. Today we'll help a newlywed couple make their marriage financially secure while giving you tips on love and money. Plus, he's a banker, radio station owner, and newspaper publisher. Learn from this man how to wear many hats and wear them well. And the Lux Life will get a first-hand look at how the rich and famous travel in style. But first, baseball's big leaguers have answered to him for over a decade. Now, he's changing the face of America's pastime. Jimmy Lee Solomon is our power player. In 1947, in a field in Brooklyn, a defining moment for our nation, number 42, Jackie Robinson, stepped to the plate and initiated what some say were the first steps toward the civil rights movement. Baseball integrated before the public schools, Brown v. Board of Education. It also integrated before the armed forces. I mean, Jackie Robinson's uh, breaking the color barrier in baseball was a grand experiment that the entire society watched. Robinson's courageous act changed the face of sports and opened the gates for black athletes. But ironically, 60 years later, baseball is witnessing a staggering reversal of African Americans on the field. It's dropped over the last 30 years from a high of 27% to a low of now, some reports say 8.5%. And the hue in the stands is not much greater. I'm going to be frank here, but I've been to numerous Yankee games, some Met games, and I don't see a lot of us out there. The interest has dropped among African Americans in, in, in our sport. I think we're missing out on a tremendous uh, uh, opportunity and a lot you know, African American buying power is, is, is enormous in this country. For us to lose out on that would be a travesty. But change is in the air, thanks to this man, one of the most powerful and highest ranking African Americans in a $5.5 billion industry. Describe to me your role with Major League Baseball. Well, my title is the Executive Vice President of Baseball Operations for Major League Baseball. Basically, that means I oversee the game. Including rules and administration for Major League operations, both domestic and international, as well as 173 minor league affiliates with its 5,000 players. Solomon also handles security, umpires, scouting, on-field discipline, and the fall leagues, which play after the regular season is over. What's your favorite part about the job? That, that's kind of a tough one to answer because, you know, it's uh, not, I would say payday is a great day. And, you know, I'm glad you brought that up because we often, it's often publicized the, the salaries of your athletes. Mm -hmm. you, you clearly have a position where you hold a lot of influence and, and lay the lay of the land out for this game. What are you making? What am I making? Mm -hmm. Well, you know, I'm, I'm making just enough to be able to come here and to serve baseball in the capacity of a leader. So you're, you're not going to reveal the salary? I was never very good in math. <laughs> Let's try to figure it out. <laughs> that's, that's, you know, I was better in English uh -huh. in history class. I didn't well, do very well. <laughs> so does the acronym RBI ring a bell? It's actually Solomon's Urban Initiative called Reviving Baseball in Inner Cities. At a price tag of $1 million per year, it promotes baseball in over 200 cities worldwide. Plus, he's allocated $10 million to build urban youth academies in Compton, California and Atlanta, with the promise of six more in Boston, Houston, Arlington, Texas, Miami, Philadelphia, and Washington, D.C. The academies don't just have an athletic uh, training component, but they also have a vocational component as well as an educational component because some of the kids won't be baseball players. Some of the kids will need a scholarship to go to school. Some of the kids might be uh, interested in being umpires, groundskeepers, scouts or coaches. So we've got to make sure that it's accessible to all these kids, especially the African-American population that we're talking about. But you have players who have extremely high profile that are African-American. Are, are they helping with your initiatives? Um, you've got Sheffield, you've got uh, Jeter. I would say that uh, Derek Jeter has a, a very high profile. Gary, uh, less so, I think. Gary is controversial. 
We have some personalities that are very, very attractive. Tory Hunters, Dontrell Willis, Ryan Howard. I haven't heard of any of these people. Well, here, that's my point. Ryan Howard, two years ago, was Rookie of the Year. Last year, he's MVP. And he could walk in this room, you wouldn't know who he was. That, with the change. With all these diversity programs, we had to ask, is Major League Baseball promoting ownership? To this day, no African American has majority ownership of a professional Major League Baseball team. But it hasn't been for the lack of trying. Several African Americans, including Bob Johnson, have tried. And to buy a team today, it'll cost you approximately $1 billion. African American ownership, you know, is a virtue of writing a check. Uh, I don't think that anybody, if, if Oprah wanted to buy a team, I don't think anybody would have a problem with that. If Oprah, Cosby, all those guys got to get, <laughs> they, can, they can get a team. I think the colors are for sale right now. Big talk from a small town Texas boy who grew up on a farm, never playing baseball, but eventually graduated from Harvard Law, was a practicing attorney, and went on to help the MLB squeeze 10 million annually from the minor leagues. So being able to to make that profitable is, in essence, what aided to your climb up the rank. Basically, an operations department is an expense model. We just spend money. We don't make any. Uh, but uh, when I changed the model to being a revenue-generating model, then all of a sudden I, I was a little cuter around here. Which Solomon has parlayed into influence and power. He's okayed Major League Baseball's first-ever televised draft. He launched the All-Star Futures game. And his latest accomplishment, creating the civil rights game. We brought uh, the St. Louis Cardinals uh, in to play against the Cleveland Indians in Memphis, Tennessee, the city where Martin Luther King was assassinated. Proceeds went to the NAACP, NAACP Legal Defense Fund. I am happy to have this opportunity. I, I, I like to think that uh, other kids who uh, grow up and look a little bit like me say I have a chance to, to you know, coming uh, into baseball, into football, into basketball, any sport, into corporate America. And I think that uh, in a, as in a leadership position, uh, I, I have to, I have an obligation to, to make sure that uh, African Americans get the opportunity to want to play our sport, uh, to work in our sport, and to uh, have access to our sport. Coming up next, we'll take a look at love and money, expert advice on how couples can avoid fighting over finances. Plus, lifestyle editor Sonia Lean shows us how to be a real jet setter when we return. The Black Enterprise Business Report is brought to you by Toyota, a great way to keep moving forward.